Hi everyone and welcome to Monday Night Stamping. Uh, my name is Lillian and I'm so glad you're joining me tonight. I'm coming to you from Spruce Grove, Alberta in Canada and this is a place where we try to unlock paper crafting ideas and skills and projects and just have some crafting fun together. So in Canada, the, or in Alberta anyway, I think most of Canada, this is a long weekend. So thank you for finishing off your long weekend with me here tonight, or if you're joining live. And if you're joining uh, the replay or watching on YouTube, thanks for catching us and joining us too. We loved having everybody take part. And I am pretty excited. Well, I say that every time. But um, I had to do a little thinking on tonight's project to make it where I wanted it to be. And I think it's something we can all do. A lot of you um, really took part in last week's class um, project and the week before. So I'm really thank thankful for that. And I'm really glad that many of you are starting to share in my Facebook group. Um, we, we love to see what you create, and so that's super too. But I also love the community here and how you chat back and forth and um, kid each other or help each other out. So thank you for all of that. So let's just see. The question while I go down to my desktop, how um, do you like to spend your long weekends in the summer? Um, so, for example, lots of people like to go camping. There are lots of people who like to do the festivals because there tend to be tons of festivals going on. Some like to do family activities or games night or family reunion. There tend to be a few weddings, of course, and that kind of thing. So what are things that if you had a choice or what, what would you like to do on a summer long weekend? Or what did you do? Uh, maybe you could share that too, just as I'm getting everything going here, making sure that we're actually going live and sharing it to my group. And by the way, I really appreciate it if you share my videos on your social media. So share with friends and family and that really is a great thing so they can take part too. Uh, enjoy the sun in the yard, relaxing and playing with the dogs. Do you know what, Judy? That's pretty much what we did today too. Um, and it was perfect. Took the dog for a walk. Well, as you, many of you know, we are puppy sitting for our daughter. So we've been getting lots of our puppy fixes in lately and it's been all good. I'm just trying to figure out where that black thing is right I can see it on my computer but I can't see it in my phone so I'm trying to figure out where it is let's see if I go this way there I think we figured it out always something to keep my mind active right so we'll just move this up Move these out of the way and we'll be set to go. So just a couple of things while we're getting all set here. One is the 30% off of all the kits and people are really eating this up. So remember kits come in all different shapes and sizes. There's this and there's this big one. There's all different kinds. And one lady just contacted me today to order some kits and she said she couldn't believe how much variety there is there now. Stamping Up tends to bring a new kit out the beginning of every month anymore. So that is just a fun thing to be aware of and I am finding I'm using them more and more. They are some really good stuff out there. Where to find kits? One of the places you can find them is to go to online exclusives and you can see them there. Or you can go to my website and click shop now and then there a menu comes down and you can click uh, kits and then you'll be able to see them just like that. So let me move this out of the way. And just one other thing that I want to mention. Um, 
whoops, helps if I've got it right way up. I am just putting the finishing touches on my Christmas in August in-person class. So it's coming soon. I just have to verify a couple of dates with the family and make sure everything's a go. But um, I'm excited. This is likely one of this, all my Christmas ones, but these are likely some of my most popular classes. So um, just be on the lookout. I will be posting more about that in the days to come. Alrighty. Um, just a few days ago, I, I was planning to do something different tonight for Facebook Live. And then a few days ago, um, somebody posted, and I'll share her name in a moment, a project using this designer paper here. And it was an absolutely stunning project. This this paper is amazing, by the way. If you want to see the individual sheets, if you go to my uh, online store and then enter the code, you, you'll see it come up and it'll show a display. But down the left-hand side, you'll see different pictures you can click on and it goes through each page so you can see it. Um, clearly that way. So that's a good way to get a better look at things if you want. Anyway, I didn't have that paper, but I uh, decided to give it a whirl and I use the country, country Lane, I think it is. I'm having a memory blank here. So this is how it works. And it's really kind of like three cards put together to make one. So you undo the ribbon and you open it up and you've got your Z fold here. And then you open up this and you've got a little pocket here for a gift card or for a bookmark. And then you open up this and it is another card, just like that. So I fell in love with this and I'm going to show you the basics for how this was made, but then I adapted it a little. So the person who shared it was Charlene Silvestri Yuhas or Yohas or whatever, something like that. Anyway, um, oh, I'm seeing lots of love for this card. I am so glad I'm not the only one that fell in love with it. So it is not hard. Basically, well, I'll show you why it's not hard. Where did I put my papers here? I'm just going to show you the basics first off. So here's a half sheet of cardstock and I chose two colors. She made it all in one. So here's a half sheet of cardstock folded in half. So that's your basic card, right? No, whoops, somehow or rather my phone went down a little lower. And then um, I here's another piece folded in half. So she started out with a piece of cardstock, cut it in half, folded each of them in half so that they're four and a quarter by five and a half. Then she took this one and folded it back. And then she took this one and put the fold on the outside and snuck it in here like that. So when you opened it, it went like that. And then there was just another little card here and then the pocket here. So it's really, really not hard to do and it really looks impressive. And then I got to thinking, could I do this skipping the cardstock and just using designer paper? So that's where I started to do some plain. So let me bring in my, the designer paper I chose. So I chose the uh, Fresh as a Daisy designer paper and do I have the directions for this card? I can post the link. It, several different demonstrators have done um, this type of fold, Judy. And uh, I know there's some have videos, so I will share that. But basically, I'm going to be sharing it tonight, too. So um, just, just hang in there with me, okay? So I, I'm taking a 12 by 12 piece of designer paper. Let me just put it over there. And... I'm cutting it in five and a half strips. Let me just see, can you see there? Five and a half strips. So let me show you how it ended up. 
So here is one five and a half strip. So five and a half by 12 is that one there. And then I needed another strip that is five and a half by eight and a half. So this is going to be a bit of extra. So there it is right there. We're going to use part of it. And then we have a one inch by 12 inch left over. So this, this piece is extra. This piece is extra for the main part of the card, but we are going to use it. And on here, we're going to diagonally cut a piece off here and there's going to be a bit extra there. So in the newsletter, uh, the handout tutorial will be in Thursday's newsletter and I will have a picture of this there as well. So let's just take these papers here. Now the biggest decision is, well, first off, you fold it in half like that. So you've got your, your card, just like I did the white one. And then you're going to fold, maybe I'll fold it this way. So the biggest decision is which design do you want on the outside and which do you want showing, all right? So I could do it this way or I could reverse fold it and go this way. Whereas when you were doing this card, you were cutting designer paper to put down but you end up with the same kind of look. All right, so I decided after playing around, nearly wearing out the folds here, to go this way. I'm going to have this as the Z fold part and this as the part that's tucked in. So this is going to fold like that, just like that. Let me just see here, yeah. Uh, I think I did it the wrong way here. Yeah, so um, I thought I had this all figured out, but this, oh. yeah, I do have it all figured out. There we go. So your short fold should be on this end, which it was in my diagram, just for some reason. And it's going to go here. And then this is going to fold. So basically we've got Again, a four and a quarter by five and a half card, but we've got the fold on this side and it's going to tuck in here. All right, so I would never have put these colors together, but Stamping Up did and the other color they brought in was copper clay. And who would have thought those colors would look so good together. So we're gonna play with those as we build our card. So the one thing we need to do here is to make the pocket before we go any further. So we're going to start at the point and then cut down to just sort of wherever. Um, so I'm going to put it in here. So I'm putting the point right in my cutting trough here. And down here, let me just see, I am just going to leave an eyeball just a little bit of an edge. So this is another piece of scrap paper, but really you're using most of a 12 by 12 piece of designer paper. So this is going to make the pocket and to keep it so we can tuck whatever we want in it, photograph, um, um, gift certificate, bookmark, quote, whatever. I'm just putting glue on the very edges and gluing that closed. And I don't think I've used my bone folder yet. And when you're doing a fancy fold card, it's important to use your bone folder. So we'll do this just like this. And now what we're going to do is glue this onto here. And because we're putting it together, it, even though it's made with designer paper, it's making the card pretty sturdy. Now you could flip it and put it this way too. Doesn't really matter. And maybe there's continuity there. I, I don't think it matters. Maybe I'll do it that way. So just put a bit of adhesive here. Put this piece here. Now I am going to close it up. 
and make sure it's all even, but also I'm making sure it doesn't bind. So I'm closing it up and with the liquid glue, if it was too close to the fold, it would scoot it over a bit and now it doesn't bind at all. So now we have really the basics of our card. So let's continue on here. Let's bring in whatever we're going to do to decorate this part here. So right going to actually bring in some copper clay. I tried the Moody Mauve and I decided the copper clay looked pretty neat and then we're just going to layer it up like that. So in this card here we used a different shape so you can use whatever shape you want. You can cut rectangles, you can do circles, you can do squares, you can use whatever you want and we're going to stamp on here first and we're going to stick with uh, the the die set, the bundle. So we're sticking with the um, Cheerful Daisies bundle. And we're using predominantly the stamps. We're going to use a few dies here. And by the time we're finished, we will have used pretty much all of the stamps. So I've got them all here. And we're going to start... I don't know about you, but I am needing lots of birthday cards. So we're going to start with the birthday wishes. And because it's photopolymer, I'm going to add a little bit of cushion underneath by using my piercing mat. Now, I also thought we could have just cut one of these out and put it on the front of the card too. So that, that would have been another option. But I decided to go through the different steps with you here. So let's do this and let's use some more copper clay. It's a nice rich color. It, uh, I, I really, really like it. There we go. So there we've got that stamped like that. And we can close that up. Now we're going to do a few daisies and we're going to do them in the Moody Move. So I'm going to start with the big open image first. And I'm going to use full strength. And oh, we'll just stick it down about there. Yeah, there we go. I'm just going to move this card before I stick it in some ink. And then I'm going to use, I love this, whoops, it's still in here. I love this little half daisy too. So I tend to use that whenever I can, just like that. So I've used them full strength. Now we could leave it like that, but these are called two-step stamping. So we can also put, fill in the color. It just, um, so I'm going to do that, but I want it to be lighter. So I'm going to stamp it off once. And now, because I stamped it. Okay. I did this earlier today with it. no pro there it is. No problem at all. But you know, because you're watching me. There we go. And we'll do the same with this. Stamp it off once. So we get two tones from one ink pad. We can even get three, as you know, when we stamp it off a third time. So there we've got it just like that. Now we have some little centers and um, this is Moody Move, but I'm gonna do the centers in copper clay just to add a little bit of interest there. And I think I'll use full strength. Just fills it in nicely. And we've got a little half one here, some for the half one, some more copper clay. There we go. So this is looking pretty good. Now you could stop right here and put it together, or you could do a little splattering. So to do a little splattering, I'm going to bring in some wild wheat. Now I don't have the wild wheat marker and I don't have the wild wheat blends. So what I'm going to do is take my ink pad put some on a block. It's water soluble. I just rinse it off under the tap afterwards. It's not a big deal. And I'm going to bring in my water painters. So these are like paint brushes. So there's a really thick one 
and a couple of thinner ones. And you put water in the barrel and it's ready to go just like that. And so I'm going to put squeeze, it's the word push here. I'm going to squeeze some onto my block and just get some juicy color like that. And bring in my bone folder and just do a few taps. Well, may better make it juicier, I guess. Again, earlier today, this worked beautifully. Okay, watch me get a few blobs now. There, we're getting some. So if you like the spatters, there is a way to do it. And afterwards, I'll just clean that off and I'll also run this under the tap. So we'll just get that out of the way for right now. And we've got this piece done. So let's mount that onto here. Here we go. Now, because this card has a few layers, it needs to be held closed. Now, you're go I've got another card at the end. I'm going to show you where I haven't done this next step, but I'm going to do it so that you have options and you can see the difference. To tie it closed, I can either use the ribbon or the twine. I'm going to use the ribbon inside, so I think I'll be consistent and use the ribbon. I think the twine would look really good though. So I'm going to drape the ribbon around. I need to see, do I have enough to tie a bow? So I'm just going to tie it. Up. It's rocket science, right? Just, can I tie a bow with this? Yes, I can. So that's going to be enough ribbon and I will snip that off, take that out of the way. Looks like I need to order some more of that ribbon. <laughs> Drop my scissors. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put the ribbon so it's hanging over the edge like that and make sure it's even. It's not quite even, so I'm going to adjust it like that. Now I'm going to say, okay, if this is on the front of the card, where do I want the ribbon to be? I think I want it down a smidge. I think I want it right about there. So what I'm going to do now is bring in my seal and just run a bit of glue there to hold it in place right here. I'm not going to worry about the rest. I'm not going to fasten it on the back because otherwise then when you go to open up your card, it's not going to open, right? I just want it fastened in this one spot. And then I'm going to put this on with dimensionals. And I just got to grab my dimensionals here. I threw them on the floor. So got my exercise for the night. So remember, we don't want to glue your card closed. So if it's going to go about here, I'm going to put some dimensionals here and I'm, I can catch that ribbon and that's okay. And then I'm going to put dimensionals along the edge that's going to go here. out of there and we're just going to put that in position and we'll add our embellishments at the end. So we've got that part done. So here you could actually do some more layers that you, you can dress this up as much as you want. What we're going to do is just do a little bit of stamping. Make this go right along. So I'm going to open this up. And I'm going to bring in this stamp. And again, I'm going to use Moody Mo. And I always forget how gorgeous it looks to stamp on designer paper. So I'm using full strength here, just like that. 
And then I'm going to fill it in with this. So I'm going to stamp it off once and go like that. And we've got a nice subtle daisy happening there. Now we have this great stem. So we can put it wherever. Whoop, I got, oh. Okay, guess what? I am going to be adding a little embellishment there. I forgot that I had my stem resting on here upside down to show you that you could bend it. So let's, um, let's bend it a little bit. And I've got some scrap paper somewhere. We are going to, first off, we are going to pretend that we planned it that way and add a bit more. Hopefully this will work. Let's see. Now, if we put this over here, we've got it looking like that. Now we're going to clean this. So I just did reverse stamping in that I used the back of the stamp. There's always a way to fix things, right? There. Now, the reason it was like that was I wanted this to angle the other way. And when it's photopolymer, you can. You can twist it any way you want and change it so that it's going to go that way. So let's just put that to the side. We'll start the flower over again. And we'll bring in, we were using these two, right? We'll bring in, do the open image first. And then the closed. So I'm adding an extra step, but you know what? It's going to work out just fine, I think. You could always add some more words in here if you would like, whatever. But we're going to leave it at that for right now. Oh, we should add a leaf or two, right? I had planned for all of this to be happening on the designer paper. So you, you get the idea of stamping on designer paper. There we go. And I might fix this up a little bit at the end, but you, when I'm finished, but you do get the idea. So now we'll bring in this and we will fasten it there. And there we go. We've got that resting right there. Now, when the card is like this, okay, I am going to take that off and fix it because it needs to be a little skinnier. The plan was, well, maybe I can still do that. The plan was that it would be a little higher and we can do that. Oh, guess what? This is card is going to be a lesson in how to ad lib through your mistakes. Where we're all set to go here again. Um, so now we have a totally different look. We could have spattered that too. Now we're on the inside. Now I want to show you something that I have on my desk that I find really helpful. I have two pieces of old retired cards, two sets, pardon me, and I have them cut in increments of eighth inches. Why do I have two sets? Because then I can layer them and I can see, but I could go, okay, did, do I want the card that opens inside here? So what I'm talking about is this card right here. Do I want it? What size do I want it? And I kept playing around with that and I went with three by four and a quarter. So 
then to, that what I needed for it to end up three by four and a quarter is I need a piece that's three by eight and a half scored at four and a quarter. One of the reasons I did this is because eight and a half is the width of a piece of cardstock, right? So I can go right down the middle. So three by eight and a half scored at four and a quarter, and it's going to go in the middle here. So we can get these out of the way. I also have done the same with window sheets, and that helps me when I'm planning my designer paper usage as well. You just might find that helpful. I don't know. So this is going to go on the inside. It's two and three quarters by four, so it's just a quarter of an inch smaller. So again, we're making a smaller card now. We're making a three by four and a quarter card that's going to fit in here. And this is where we're going to bring in that one piece of the designer paper that we cut off. And we're going to use a piece from here that is two and a half by four and a quarter. So it's not, so we have to cut it this way. Four and a quarter. Two and a half and it's going to go right down the front here. I'm doing exactly the same as what I did on the blue card but before I glue it down I'm going to bring that ribbon back in and just wrap it around the designer paper. So we'll just snip that off and once I get this done, we'll look at the blue card again and just see how similar things are and maybe a little bit different. So we're going to put, just put some adhesive on the back here, wrap our ribbon around, take a look. Is it pretty straight? Yeah, it's pretty straight. And there we go. And so this is going on the front. Whoops, I'm going all the way down. Forgot about that. And then on the inside, um, it's two and three quarters by four. I stamped the, that's some more flowers I stamped off, so they're a little bit lighter. So we're just going to fasten them in, them in, this piece in. like that and now we need to decorate this i guess we could move this out of the way here so what i thought was i would bring in a vellum circle and just some more of the daisies and put them together and put them on that circle just use some of the die cuts so we'll just bring in our silicone mat and do the building on there. First off, we're going to put these two together. So it just adds three dimension kind of to the daisy. And let's put it right here. And then we're going to, we'll be cutting some of this off. So let's bring our vellum in. As always, we build on the vellum before we um, stick the vellum down. Woo! Got a little too much glue. That's not going to look very nice. Let's wipe some of that off. And we could put this on dimensionals, but because it's going to be inside, I want things to be pretty flat. So I'm going to keep it nice and flat. And I even have a little leaf that I cut. And let's see, where should we put that? Let's put that a little bit higher. Give us more room for the leaf. There we go. Like that. Am I doing it the right way? Yeah. Then we'll flip it over and trim that excess off. And usually I would put this on dimensionals too, 
but again, because it is going right on here and it's going to be on the inside, I might not. I might, well, I still might. You know what? I think I will. So we'll put dimensional behind the flower and a little mini dimensional behind the, where did my minis go? Here they are. Behind the leaf. And I'm gonna put one more mini here just to sort of give it a little more support. So you can see that any of these steps would make a card in its own, right? But you can put them all together and it looks just that much more special. So we're gonna put that there. We're going to fasten this to the inside, just center it. So here are my folds, I'm going to center it here. Now I could have flipped this paper over and made it this, but I kind of stuck with the daisies. So it's looking like that. Now all we need to do is add our embellishments. So where did they go here? We could use the in color embellishments because they match perfectly with this paper, but I am hooked on these little butterflies, plus they're nice and flat, so they're not going to add a whole lot of extra to it. Okay, here comes my usual. I'm just going to stick it down. There we go. So then we can put our gift card or a bookmark in here, and we're going to close it up so it looks like this. We're going to tie it closed, and the bow then is like a piece of an accent piece. And we'll open it again in a minute because I know some of you are kind of curious. So we've got the bow. We're we'll add a few butterflies to the front here. Let's see. We'll put a butterfly here. A butterfly here and why don't we put another one we can oh it almost gets lost over there there's another card I've made that the embellishment went over there it looked beautiful anyway so now you get the idea of how this card came together whether it was the blue one where I used cardstock and um, then just added layers, but it's the same principle. How I made the pocket here was I just cut a piece of designer paper and cut it at the angle and just put the glue down. So I, I just cut that extra piece. So this is how this one went. So this went like that. And again, you can even just use a die cut there. And so there's that one. I'll open this one up again for you. So here we go. Now, because the ribbon is only fastened in the front, we can still do this stand up and have this pop open, which is, I thought, really neat. And then we can open it up like this, put whatever we want in here, and then we've got another little card here. Now, if you were doing this for a large group, you could put places to write you could cut this off and just make this another place to write to. So the pocket is definitely optional. You can always cut that off. Now, I asked earlier today which designer paper I should use. And when I was practicing using designer paper for this design, I did use the other option. I used the Stargazer um, because it is simply stunning too. Oh, I just have to mention something here. This one is done with cardstock and it it pops. It doesn't stay closed unless it's tied. But look at this one. It's a lot less bulky because it's designer paper and it it would stay closed without being tied. The tying is a pretty is it kind of finishes it off. The stargazer one, I totally forgot about tying this. So uh, there's that. So Here's the same idea. I used the holographic paper here. It just went perfectly with this. Really a simple card. 
So it opens like this. And then this was the inside like that. And then I decided to put a gift card from Lillian in here. So I was just looking at this when I was building it and for Christmas time, wouldn't this look great with the nativity set or a snowman or something like that too? So even though it's the the uh, outer space one, it would look really neat. So this one will not tie closed, but it looks looks pretty good. So there we go. So those are three versions of the same fun fold. Um, some made strictly with designer paper, one made with cardstock, and I have just a couple of other cards I have to share with you. Um, our granddaughter just had a birthday, but she's away, so I had a little bit of grace, but she loves to do cartwheels and things, so I took the Zany Zoo, or the Zoo Crew, pardon me, and this one is doing a cartwheel, and then this is a fun fold as well. I already wrote in it, so I... I don't want to show you that. And then quite a while ago, I made this card where I just used the stargazing paper and the holographic paper, and I used the same stamp. And all it is is cardstock, designer paper, and, and that. So a very simple card, but yet it's striking. So um, I hope that now you feel brave enough to try one of these cards. It really is not difficult to do. And I think it, it just has that wow factor because it has the card inside a card kind of thing, which we did a little while ago, didn't we? So if you've got lots of that designer paper, here's the way to go about it, um, to use some of it. So uh, if you are needing some of these supplies, remember, reach out. I can help you with that. And uh, keep, keep watching for the... Um, Christmas in August and all of that information and don't forget the kit sale because 30% off whether you give a kit as a gift or whatever I don't know about you but what I'm hearing from a lot of our family is please don't give me a gift give me an experience and making a, a set of cards would be an experience talk much and experience. So thank you so much for joining me on this long weekend in August and uh, take care everybody. Bye-bye.